and then all of a sudden Jerome's got to say something, man. So everybody, it's all good. I, I don't. Two cents in. <clears throat> yeah, I don't like trading Fed days. I hate it, dude. They're um, so whipsaw. It's like up, down, up, down, and then and then it takes off in one direction like crazy. Yep. Yep. Yeah. I. Um, I'm not. <clears throat> I'm not. I'm not trading. I'm not trading today. Yo, I'm not even at the computer. What do you think of snow, bro? What are you paying attention to with uh, the new IPO? Uh, I think it's incredibly overvalued. At I think these it's. Levels. I think it. I'm I bullish on it technically, yeah. but I agree with you. It's extremely overvalued. Yeah, I'm not. I I want to see it do a short squeeze, um, but I'm not. I'm not gonna buy. I'm not buying snow up here, bro. No prayers way. Prayers go out. Prayers go out to the schmuck that bought it three nineteen. Oh my god. Oh yes, you know it. You know bro, it. Oh, I'm telling you, I'm looking more at like two thirty, two twenty. Maybe we can get a little bit of a dip. But dude, that's insane. Like, oh my god, prayers go out. This dude's down almost a hundred dollars a share at, at the, from this point to this point. And then oh uh, man, yeah. That's yeah, I um. I'm going to look for it to kind of start, start a bit of a kind of a short squeeze play, but I'm not, um, I, I just think it's way overvalued up here and I, I just want it to dip more. I'd rather it dip and you know, you're going to have, I'm more focused on the IPO lockup expiration. Yep. When that ends, I'm less, uh, kind of like skittish because actually, usually dude, when that's, the- dude that's something i don't think we've actually ever talked about on here i i love that and i'm not um well versed enough in that you would you would explain it way better than me i just know little fundamentals of that but let's talk about that for a second tell the tell the general public what that is exactly well when there's an ipo you know you get everybody that gets stock option awards you get stock award they have the option they have the ability to buy stock prior to the open date and so the people that bought it uh in anticipation of the ipo they like angel investing type things right yeah yeah they those are the people that help raise the money to do the public offering the initial public offering right whether it's you know banks a conglomerate of banks and people and and in order to do that there's people that there they have financial qualifications that they have to meet in order to get access to be able to purchase IPOs in advance um, and be part of the funding crowd and, or you got to know somebody. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, you got to give some reach arounds. <laughs> yeah. And so there, there's going to be um, if we stay trading at these levels, when the IPO lockup expires and the people that have shares from, you know, what was in the, the initial pricing was like 120, 160, something like that. It, Dude, it was, I think, yeah, I think it so. was really low. It was really low. Um, and cause like the original valuation was like what 17 billion or something like that. It, it was the, it was the biggest tech IPO like in history, but uh, I can't remember what the initial valuation um, number was. No valuation. Uh, yeah, what was the IPO price? Yeah, what did they? Okay, yeah, that's where it opened. We know that. Ooh. But yeah, oh, there it is. More than five times its twelve point four billion dollar valuation in February. So wow, the value it <clears throat> it's up a massive amount here, and and I'm just like I I just can't buy at these levels so i because i mean if you buy it now and you hold through the lockup you know you're going to get profit taking from investors i mean if we trade up here in the two i think it's going to be a great trader like a ticker to trade i, I think totally it's going to be a so great well. ticker to trade it's going to have serious range man yes yeah volume attention i think it's going to have the attention of like zoom when Zoom came out, you know, and everybody was so, I think it's going to have good attention. Yeah, look at um, Zoom, man. Seriously, let's take a look at this. Seriously. 
Look at this, was, man. That was the IPO, dude. That was the freaking IPO. It yeah. Down for a little bit, and then woo, Al, you. Yeah, you get you get the euphoria in the beginning, and then you get that sell-off, man. And that sell-off, that's usually um, it, it's usually up to the IPO lockup expiration. So, which is usually 180 days from the IPO date, unless otherwise, unless otherwise agreed to in the, by the board of directors and everybody along those lines. Um, so from today, 180 days from today will likely be the IPO expiration date, which, uh, and it'll say it, in the filings but yeah set the alarm bro that that's what <laughs> i do alarm. i'm not kidding i have calendar reminders of of ipo expirations of all of these like fancy schmancy ipos that come out like i set a calendar reminder that's like ipo expiration today and you'll see selling on them at the open and and usually what happens is you know an ipo lockup expiration like when it's like two or three weeks prior to the lockup that can sometimes be like a buy the rumor situation you know you can you can see like an inflation of price for sure um but usually when that lockup hits um and shares are now free to trade they dump and you know i'm not saying the company's going to zero i'm just saying i think that there's going to be an opportunity to get a better better price than today for sure uh so <clears throat> but trading it in the interim uh, that was that was regarding like your long-term outlook like yeah, I'm that's more like that's more that like one for the swing i'm with you yes but every day now this ticker is going to be on my watch like i'm going to watch it every single day and i'm going to look for the same technical setups that we trade dude i love and, when yeah. something ipos man that's like on literally everyone's radar on wall street not like something like oh yeah oh this you know organic food company just popped that's cool too like i'm all about like that niche but i just mean warren buffett's probably not looking at something like like dude everyone is talking about this this will be a trader for a long time man like this yeah the, the, the recent ones you like know this. yeah yeah exactly you know, the recent ones that were like really good IPOs was, you know, Uber, Lyft, um, Beyond Meat, Roku, Zoom, bro, you I'm, know, I'm all of killing, these. I'm killing in Beyond Meat, bro. I've got, I've got right a 131 151? average right now and I don't play oh, sexy. anytime sexy. soon. That's a nice like, chart. I'm riding this one for the long haul. Man, I haven't even been following it, but that's a... Put thing. that one back on watch. They're doing like, dude, they're doing like production in China. Their KFC's yep. got to deal with them. They've got some seriously good. I, I love KFC, caps, man. KFC. How in the fuck are they going to sell fake chicken? Isn't that insane? In 30 stores, I think it was, or something like that, like a month ago. Wow. Dude, dude how, like, <laughs> it, I mean, I know that you. You're you're a veggie lover. I like veggies. You know, I'm not, I, but I'm not, I'm not vegan, and I know you're not either. But um, just conscious about it. But an honest opinion, an honest opinion. Just a little bit of a. This is just a little podcast moment. Is hey, baby. fake chicken not the nastiest shit? <laughs> it can't be replicated, bro. It can't. Like, yeah. dude, think about it. Hamburgers, almost identical. Like it, you wouldn't, you, sometimes you don't even know the difference, but here's, chicken, here's the, here's the you thing, can't. Here, here's the thing. The way Unless I Unless you've got it, something to recommend because you're the guy that knows. So, <laughs> but so dude, when it comes I to something can't. like this, right? When it comes to something like this, and in no way am I saying buy something like this. I'm just saying when I look for a long-term opportunity, because I've got six brokerage accounts. I have swing trading ones. I have swing trading shorts. I have a day trade account. I got retirement. I have everything. When I mm -hmm. look, when I go long something that I believe is a long haul trader, right? The only thing I give a shit about one thing is it, is it something that is a future proof, no matter if a second pandemic comes, if the end of the world comes and the world splits in half, can a company still make money? I'm invested um, some money in companies like that. 
Um, and then I'm also invested in what I think will be the next massive rampage trend. I don't give a shit what Beyond Meat tastes like. I have never tasted it, but I'm invested. Oh, no, I'm not saying right? Beyond Meat chicken. I'm just asking. In oh, no, no, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, Joe, like, this, is, this is what I'm getting at, though. This is what I'm getting Oh, okay, okay, okay. If Beyond Meat, dude, tastes like shit, I don't care. They will eventually catch up to taste. The thing that is happening right now is there are not many companies that if you Google, hey, I need a replacement to meat. What can I invest in? There's not many publicly traded options like that. These guys are the trailblazers. What I feel is a massive movement to come. Dude, every oh, yeah. single year. I'm Look, I'm not even a vegetarian. I'm not even vegan. I'm nothing. Dude, I eat a lot of meat. Here's the thing. There are so many people out there, just like politics, diehard liberal, diehard conservative, diehard diet, diehard this, there, there is always the next trend. And I feel that alternatives, dude, look at Tesla. You couldn't get an electric car seven years ago, bro. You couldn't right. get one. Now, KNDI is, is, is a company doing that. FUV, NKLA, Tesla, Solo. Dude, the trend is change. And with, with as many people that are meat lovers, there is the opposite opposite opinion and it's as strong and they're coming out more number i just see trends man i go what is future proof and what's to come and if we ever dude if we ever had a mass like really really bad meat epidemic or something like that where do you th where there's already demand for shit like this mm -hmm. That's yep. what I look at if I long-term invest. You know, there's a lot of people that just go based on price action. There's a lot of people that go on strictly fundamentals, um, numbers of a company's revenue, you know, things like that. I take all of that into account, but most importantly, I go, dude, what is the number one demand in the world right now? Alternatives for fuel, alternatives for food, and simultaneously, what is future-proof? What is guaranteed if, to last if a tsunami wipes out all of California? You know what I mean? Like things like right. That. Vegetables grow underwater, cows don't. <laughs> I don't know how you always have a way to crack me up, but. <laughs> so, dude, I freaking love it, man. So, yeah, it's funny. Man. It's like, I mean, unless, unless cattle, unless cattle find a way to adapt like, like the Atlanteans did, you know. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's all I can say, you know. I agree oh, with man. you. But I'm better. sure, you know, I'm sure, uh, you know, you can just, you can, you can put a piece of lettuce on a, on a, just a floating little, little board and send it out in the ocean. And that's just going to probably one day, grow. One day, the, one day the world's going to look like this, dude. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think you guys know what I, no, I can't type for shit right now. Waterworld Kevin Costner. Who has seen this? <laughs> Joe, tell me. Oh, this, yes. oh this yes. This is gonna be all of Earth. Yes. <laughs> this is yes. like oh shit. If you guys ever see this movie, you gotta see it's rather ridiculous are. it is. Look how terrible that is. Look at this. Oh, that's bad. Oh my god, that movie was so much fun when I was a kid, dude. Classic, hell yeah, dude. I don't know. Hydroponics. <laughs> <laughs> but a smoothie lasts forever. That's what well, you know, that's what I'm getting at. But but honest opinion on on the taste of food. Have you found anybody that's replicated fake chicken worth a shit? I you know haven't. what, man. You know what, Joe. I I've ha I've tried a lot in my life. I really have. I think if I remember correctly, there was one place, and I couldn't believe it. I actually didn't know it was a substitute. I think because they probably drenched drenched it in barbecue or something. But yeah, it's, it's sauce. But yeah. you're right. The fad has not caught up on the taste levels. And things like that. I mean, dude, I've literally been to places where I had a cut up, baked, cooked ass, grilled ass watermelon, and I didn't know it was watermelon. Like, there are right. ways yep. to do things, but yep. very few people have figured out the taste side of things. Yeah, it's even beef. You know, <laughs> they figured out beef, they figured out pork, they figured out the texture, they figured all of that. One. All of Chicken's that. Tough. But chicken, man, nobody has cracked that code yet. I think KFC's and trying. <laughs> that's what I'm getting at. I'm like, what is KFC trying to do here? Like, <laughs> <laughs> tell me that's funny. Sell that? <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. L.A. L.A. is true. I'll tell you, though. GSE, man, I'm out of L.A., dude. L.A.'s a toilet. They have figured out food, but everything else is, is just a toilet. <laughs> L.A.'s got one good thing, yeah. alternative food options. Outside of that, man, after 30 years, I've, I've, I've realized that I'm getting out of there. It's an absolute toilet. Yep. Politics. It's, it's the... Smog. It's not maybe the taste of replicating the taste as much, but it is it is definitely replicating the failure to replicate the texture. The texture of chicken That's a tough and one. the substitute chicken is like, you know it's not chicken because of the texture. Well, they bro, can bro, mask it with flavor. So so think about this, Joe, think about this. You just said something that's very on point. And this is what investors have to think about in certain regards to anything, right? So think about, are you familiar with what rice milk is? Oh yeah. Joe, how long has rice milk been around? 30 fucking years? Yeah, my wife is lactose intolerant. Okay. So I, know okay. All, yeah. I know all about that well, shit. Well, dude, here's the thing. I'm <laughs> practically, fly, like some of my friends are, like I don't drink dairy. I just don't because it fucks with me. Here's the thing. Rice milk has been around for do 30 my, my plus cook. years. I remember being five years old and drinking it. Did that catch on insane? No. Nope. Why? Because go try almond milk. And if it tastes good, do the textures the same as milk. If yep. it's actually yep. true almond milk, not something in a carton. I actually milk. like, um, I actually like oat milk. I like the flavor of oat milk. I think that that is actually probably the, the most flavorful and got the one. texture, right? That's the whole yep. thing. Yep. So yep, you need yep. a comparison. Yeah, exactly, bro. Exa People don't think about these things, the fundamentals of what works. Yep. Yeah, the, the almond milk can get thin and you can tell the thin, you know, how, how it's less, it doesn't have that creamy aspect, but oat milk, man, I can't like, and, and from a texture standpoint, a consistency standpoint, I can hardly tell a difference when there's, if you put oat milk next to actual milk. Dude, like I, we weren't I talking about flavors for the rest of my life. It, it's just, there's so many good alternatives, man. It's just not worth it. Yep. Yep. I'm just going to be like the Amish and just get it to where I can just drink it straight from the cow and I don't have to <laughs> homogenize it. <laughs> Joe, every except time Joe that's goes really, to get a bowl of cereal, he needs except, gloves on. Yeah. <laughs> except, yeah, I know, right? It's like, it's for deadly really? if it's not homogenized, but <laughs> the freaking. <laughs> the freaking Amish have, have just like have just made their stomachs figure like figure it out. They're just their stomachs are steel. All right, does anybody have stock questions? <laughs> yeah, we like, got one. <laughs> like, we Short gotta get time. rid of this. Yeah. Can you explain your setup when you wait for a squeeze and top out and then hit bounces? What are your ideal conditions for that? Here's the perfect one on MRNS. Um, I, unfortunately I didn't hit this yesterday short time because again, I don't trade past, I don't trade past short zombie hour, but had this happened in the immediate morning, like really, really quickly, um, even though it still worked, this is what I look for. So let's take a look at this. So if my outer lines don't come in the immediate morning, if I don't get a massive, you know, like maybe an outer line and then a tank immediately, and I'm waiting for kind of like a squeeze, right? That third option. Like I'm like, okay, let's just wait for all the eager shorts and the chasers to get squeezed out here's what you need you need a big squeeze in the outer lines followed by that that's the trend change that's that's the time where it's probably peaked out um it sets a top and then you hit bounces so it's as simple as that brother just wait for the squeeze and then wait for a candle that says oh top is set the top is always set on an uptrender with a death candle, at least, at least a semi death candle. Because when you want a true death candle, the bigger, the better. <laughs> yeah, there's Joe. But um, to mm -hmm. get a little bit of a trend change, man, to get that kind of like, do you think it's time to start in now? It is because on this one, that's not. See that when it put it in the top right there? These are just these are just organic pullbacks. This is just like, okay, let's pull back a little bit. Okay, let's pull back a little bit more. Bounce, pull, bounce, bounce, pull back. You want this. You want this feeling of like, oh, dude, that was actually kind of nasty. So mm -hmm. that's what I look for. Me and Joe talk <clears> about that a lot. Yeah, I think the I think a good way to in the question was explain your setup where you wait for a squeeze to top out and then you hit bounces. Well, yeah, that I mean the the best way to do that is is going to be the relationship between price and VWAP. 100%. 100%. So it's all like, I, mean, I just kind of assumed that, that I had already discussed that. But I mean, dude, we'll discuss it again. Dude, me, this is me and Joe's like, 
Bible in small caps, guys. And I, and I discussed it in the beginning of this webinar, but if it opens anywhere near VWAP and it's been playing around with VWAP during pre, you got to wait for these outer lines. There's no exception. Yep. You can get yep. Look, you may make money in here and here and here and here and blah, 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 blah. You're going to get chopped up every now and then, man. I just wait for these levels, man. But if it opens at 270 under VWAP and pre, and then it pops up here, that's where you want to scale. And I can put size on at VWAP confidently. Yeah. And the when it hits those outer lines like that i mean you've got to be covering if you're going to short something that goes you know like you're you're hitting like a first resistance like you've got to be covering on that first pullback to vwap that's like, what you're and saying you're not right there. you're you're not yeah exactly and your your order is um not like just like sitting at VWAP, that's the key is you're not like, okay, VWAP is, you know, what's the price range of it? Okay, VWAP is sitting at, at 361. So my order is 362 to cover. No, you, if, if VWAP is 361, you need to be scaling out in the 370s, like in high 360s, like 368, three, like you need to get filled. You need to get the fill because many times it can do what Austin talks about and people anticipate the bounce off of VWAP. And so they start buying before it ever touches it and then it never touches. And then you're back breaking even and you're like, son of a bitch. Like, <laughs> dude, <nailed it. laughs> it's, Joe just nailed it. Like, that, that's it. I, uh, dude, that's just life, right? That's just trading right there. You're like, should have covered, son of a bitch. <laughs> and and that it, you know when you're when you're along and you're like and it's going straight up and you're like there's my target let's see how far this could go and then it's like boom you're like son of a bitch should have sold and <laughs> like that's just that that's that's it and so with with this setup i i mean i'm the same way i'm i'm the same school of thought as you is but if you have trouble figuring out when the top is set okay when you have kind of, you know, you don't have like hard, fast rules. A hard, fast rule is it's got to have that death candle through VWAP and that's it. Like that spot that he's highlighted right there. Like you have to have that criteria. Once you have that criteria, now it's safe to hit those pops. Now the top is truly set for the moment. Well, and Joe, let me say it like this. Let me say it like this. So guys, I've been trading for seven years. Let me tell you something. Until I figured out on about year three that the death candle was truly the nail in the coffin and the time to go for short, do you know how many times I would short a pullback like this because I just felt like that was it? Do you know how many times? But again, the MIC wasn't created back then and I wasn't talking about Alex, right? So right. the thing yeah. is, there are certain identifiers and the bigger the death candle is always the better, the better choice to short. But if you say, screw this pre-market, just look at this. Just say this is all you see. Nothing pre-market. Just say this is all you see. If this intraday action is up all day, guys, there's not one reason, not one to short anything until you see a trend shift. Now, I usually like death candles, honestly, about two times as big as this. But if you have to, if you have to short somewhere in here, the reason why this is so good is because it just gives you set risk, man. Then if you're shorting anything right here, your risk is now the top of that death candle, no exceptions. I'm gonna be honest with you, the level that I am absolutely most comfortable with, that where I feel personally the top is truly set, truly, truly set, is right there. Oh, dude, 100%. That candle, that candle right there, that, I mean, that's, that's it for me. Like that, that candle, the other one, you know, you don't lose VWAP quite. You lose, you lose it. You know what I'm saying? Like you lose it, but that is a, is a textbook VWAP stuff move right there. Well, and the Joe, that's what I, that's what I was yeah. saying is oh, for, okay, the, I got you. for the guys that have no control and just have to short up. You have to at yep. least wait for this. But dude, the patient yep. shorts, the ones that are like, I don't lose because I'm so patient, they're waiting for this. That's, I mean, that's a clear indication right there that the psychology has shifted in the, in the uh, buyers and sellers of the stock. Like the momentum, that's a clear shift in momentum. Like 
and momentum can be reclaimed. Don't think it's a hundred percent win Always rate. Can. Momentum can be reclaimed with enough volume. Um, but that that move right there, where you see the reclaim, the big green candle, and then all of a sudden just rejection, and that's a stuff move. That is that is a potential reclaim of VWAP. And it stuffs right back under VWAP and has the has a really bad close on what appears to be pretty decent volume on a sell side. Hell yeah! Because here's the uh, thing, I mean, guys: not it's huge. Like, if you're just not paying huge, attention to like good. little stuffing action, look, it's technically stuffed right here on like a high a day chance, right? Yep. And then yep. how many times do you short right here, and then it goes up another fifty cents? So. Just yep. wait for the nails. This is, dude, this is Van Helsing putting a, like a stake through the vampire heart. Like that's what you're waiting for, man. As short as yeah, you're waiting for blood. You've got the clear line at 360. 360 and 370 are your scale zones. And you risk the top of that candle that Tosh is high, where that white line is. Like that bottom white line, like, like you can, you can see the um, risk. That white line is the risk. That's it. And now you're hitting a pop back. Once you get that candle, you're hitting strength back into 360, 370 VWAP area, risking over the top of that candle. Yeah. And then like technically that speaking, is, yeah. Technically speaking, you know, when, when, um, you know, Treat says, what is the outer line? 380. Technically, the outer line, if you are paying attention to VWAP, really is probably the base of these candles. I'd say that that's the scale zone because if you guys yep. see, that's that's a I'd probably even give that one. That's the base of the candle to the wick. That's where the immediate top is. I would have hit this if it was actually within the first hour. It was not yesterday, so I didn't take the trade. But remember what Joe says: a stock trading near highs at VWAP, or I'm sorry, at zombie hour, is an indication that it will maybe and most likely go down. So if you can combine this. Yep with a scale zone, a whole and half dollar rejection at four, and we're trading near the highs, this probably has. So just wait for your confirms, man. Yep. Like th it. there's that 1030 thing. When a stock is trading at lows at 1030 or at VWAP at 1030, there's plenty of opportunity to manipulate it back higher and let an algo take over. But if it's, um, if it's trading at highs of the day, at 1030, what do you think is going to happen? Demand dries up at 1030, right? Every day, every day it dries up at 1030. The volume always dies off at 1030. So if demand decreases and a stock is trading at highs, what do you think is going to happen? It's just simple economics. It's just simple, basic economics. Lack of demand increases supply, which sells the price down. There, there's nothing more complicated about it and so it, it's don't be long and don't be long in this shit like at 10 30 like here here's what i'm trying to point out if people would be longing like that breakout like that it'd be like oh it's breaking the pre-market highs right and little did they know like that's 10 30 like that's right at 10 30 and so you get a small opportunity to exit for a profit but you don't get much man you don't get much like the, the odds are not in your favor on the long side. The odds favor the shorts at that point. Dude, hell yeah. How about longing if it's around VWAP? Well, yeah, that's what we talk about with the VWAP reclaim strategy. Not my style, but you totally can. Sava. Pull up Sava. Sava uh, did it. Let's take a look. It was either Sava or VXRT. Nope, Sava right there. Look at that end of the day. Dude. And Look at what that VWAP reclaim. Always say, guys, what do I always Look at that. say? This is the Shoop. reverse death candle. Reverse. Yep. What do you think the happens on something like that? You wait for the pop to short, but the drop to long. This is the absolute opposite of a death candle. Literally. This is the FU candle to shorts. It's, it's literally the mm -hmm. FU candle volume comes back like look at the volume volume is a clear indication that shit was dead dead for hours and then all of a sudden that candle happens game back on Woo! matching the morning volume that's <laughs> what i like to see yeah and so it's it, it 
So the question of longing around VWAP, no. You need a technical reason to get in, not just it's around VWAP. Okay, that that's that's nothing. That's nothing. Like there there's nothing there. That's exactly so, right. Yep. This is the best indicator ever. <laughs> yeah, it, and the people that that um, tell you that VWAP does not have edge, you know, it's that's false. It has edge, but there are situations when it applies, and there are situation when situations when it does not. Again, guys, with everything, um, it's confirmation. Yeah. Like Joe just said, it. It's dude, you want authority behind the sentiment, so you want the volume coming back in, right? But you want it with this. So if, if, you know, the kiss of death is the death candle you want, that's an, that's authority. That's a break. That's not like, Oh, I'm trickling under VWAP. Okay. Now we can short a pop. No. Cause you can get squeezed. Cause the volume is not rushing out. They're not panic selling. This is authority on a break, man. Shorts are now really in a bind, man. And then of course, yep. just like everything, if you think about the inverse, like this would literally be a pop on a drop. So of course things do have to this kind of stabilize and get you want to see this. Let me show you. Yeah, Click, let me see put you a know. minus put a minus sign in front of the ticker. So Saba does it do the inverse? Do minus. Hold on. Like minus that? Sava. Yes. Get out of here. And get now look at out that chart. Of here. Oh, if that was the chart, God. everybody'd be like, short it. Joe, like, I didn't even it. know about that feature, dude. What the hell? <laughs> Guys, the, look at that. It's the funniest it, shit. It's the shit, funniest dude, shit. I, dude, I never, seven years, <laughs> I didn't know that was a feature. What the fuck? <laughs> Guys, oh, look at that. Did I not just yeah. literally explain that to yeah. you? Here's the death candle slam. There's the draw. Oh, dude, Joe. <laughs> We're giving way too good a content for free. <laughs> <webinar. laughs> but that's my point is, is, what is the like, hell? that when you flip it upside if you're somebody that can only see the short side yep. then flip that fucking chart upside down and convince yourself as to why that trade has edge dude here's myo yeah <laughs> crazy bro this is crazy i had no idea now, you could if you do looked that. at this chart if you looked at this chart on the on the inverse like that would you even touch it I wouldn't touch that. No, fucking God, there's nasty. nothing in this. There's, it's nasty. That's Let's gross. see Kodak. Let's see Kodak. Oh, my God. Wow. Wow, Joe, that's crazy. Yep. Dude, you know what's so crazy about this one? Is Remember what I said, guys? Big wicks are a sign of reversal. Dude, look yep. at this. Is if this was a death candle, then it goes back down. Look at this. This bit, That's indicative Big, of a fat massive wick. reversal, man. Once oh, yeah, exactly. Whopper claims, oh, shit. I mean, look how it reclaims that, how it reclaims that pre-market level. Like it, it wicks under it and then reclaims in a strong ass close. Strong bro, bro, that's, close. That's crazy. I want to go back to the solid one. That's, I didn't even know you could do this. No, I'm, I'm stoked, man. Thank you. Wow. That's crazy. Yeah. See that guy? So now let's take a look at normal Sava. Seriously. Yep. Flip look it back that. around. That's, that's, there you the, go. that's the death candle pop. Like, yep. That's it, bro. Like that's it. Hey, you learn something new every like, day. It, 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 there's the death candle, and then what I like to call the rebirth candle. It's <laughs> it's the it's the phoenix out of the fire. Oh so my guys, God, check this. Spy. Who the fuck? What they say? Yeah, I know. What I know. They I just say saw that, in the market. Oh Hold on, my Joe. God. Check this out. I'm gonna go one step further, guys. Say you have TD Ameritrade, right? Check this out. Why don't you do this in the mornings? If you have two stocks on radar, Kodak and blah, 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 uh, MYO, look at the inverse. These are how they normally are. Look at the inverse and see if you have an edge. Bro, how sick is that, man? These are just two stocks, guys. This is just what it would look like if it was inversed. And we just revolutionized trading. Okay. <laughs> I, I, bro, we just keep topping ourselves with these webinars. <laughs> Oh man. Um, wow. Guys, do you have any questions for us? Any questions at all? Who's got some questions? Will it run live data? Yeah, of course. Real time, baby. What a day. What if it says real time, it's going to be real time. Wow. 
Dude, you know what? You know what's so crazy about that, Joe? I swear to God, man, I feel like someone showed me that like five years ago, and I just wasn't as as extreme a trader as I was. So I probably just flubbed it away. I was probably just like, eh, cool. All right, that's cool. Man, that How would so, I use that? That is How would so I use necessary. That? I don't know. Man. I'll show Alex that. I bet he doesn't even know. It it's 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 a fun thing to like it, to show a short seller. Yeah. Because because like you know, a short seller always has trouble seeing the long side. One and so like, I think to really break that psychology barrier, right. To really break that barrier. Um, you almost have to see it in your own life. Have Yeah. And put it, put it next to the actual chart. You know, you have Sava and then you have the minus Sava, which is the inverse of it. And if you look at the minus Sava and you go, uh, you can't do it on DOS, by the way. Uh, if you go and try to short that, you know what I mean? You're like, why would I short this? <laughs> Joe, this is a just horrible thought, fucking short. Guys, I just thought of a disclaimer, though, for real. If you get confused on what the real chart is. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's your own problem. <laughs> That's yeah. your own. He's going to be like, he's going to be like, dude, Kodak, I got to long this shit because he's going to see this. Now imagine, imagine everybody starts, imagine everybody starts flipping it upside down and they're doing like all the opposite shit and it all of a sudden works for them. Oh my well, God. Well, folks, well, folks, that's well, an Joe, indication. Cause I, Joe, cause I was going to laugh, dude. I was going to laugh. Like, <laughs> you know how people like, guys, for those who aren't familiar, Dust and Nugget are in oh, right. of what yeah. each other. So Dust is bearish gold commodity and Nugget is an ETF that is bullish gold. So there will be guys that are such short sellers. They can't just buy dust that is actually betting against gold. They actually have to just short Nugget, the bullish gold. Yep. <laughs> it's like I know. It, that's, it, somebody did that the other day. They were like, all right, I'm short SQQQ. I was like, why don't, why you, don't you just long, long QQQ? Why are you shorting SQQQ? They're like, I don't know. I don't know. I'm like, then, okay, well, I just don't, I don't, I don't get the, I understand the psychological part, you know, that's like, um, yeah, but yeah, there you go, Jerry Seinfeld. Dude, that is one of my favorite episodes. When George is like, he walks in the Yankees and <laughs> Yeah. <he's... laughs> If everything you do is wrong and just do the opposite. The opposite would have right. to be right. <laughs> oh, man. Joe, thank oh, you for that, good. man. Seriously, that's, that's yeah. I can't wait to look. But that, that you like, know, if everybody's obsessed with death candles and they can't see the VLAP reclaim ever, you know, that, boom. That's the setup right there. That's it. That's the juice. That is the juice. Even if the bee could explain it, the flyway pollen is better than shit. The fly would not understand. <laughs> That's good. Long bees, short flies. Who's got questions, guys? I know you got some questions. Come on, where are your questions at? This What's is the market doing? To, to, to just kind of see the inner workings of MIC, to get your questions answered. This is uh, where we're here for you. So utilize it. What's the spy doing? Oh, let's take a look. I totally forgot. Taking a shit. Woo! QQQ as well. Tech going down. Um, wh uh, where? Let's see. Um, Kodak. There seems to be a death candle with no pop. Means no pop. Then flush. You talking about this opening one, brother? This uh, kind of stuffed death candle. <clears throat> Mitch, is this what you're talking about? Uh, okay. So you're talking 315. about fifteen. Oh, he's talking about like now. 315. No, 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 brother. No, no. Anything like this or like this or like th these are nothing. Um, those are nothing, yeah, no. brother. The only death Look at the volume in comparison to everything this. else. Like this isn't the even volume a death is so tiny. that's the only one. Yeah. A death candle is in nature the biggest candle of the day. No questions asked. If you have to ask what it looks like, it ain't one. Um, it's the most volume coming out, and it's just it's just such a moment of, of um, authority that it's, it's just, you, you almost can't replicate it. There's usually one on a chart, maybe two, but there's usually one and it's very distinct. It is the kiss of death. 
as bad as that sounds. <laughs> <laughs> Us traders are so like pessimists. Like we look at the dark side of things. It's like the death candle, the nail in the coffin. It's like how dark. Yeah, I know, right? God, it's such dark terminology, right? Your trade on the outer line, Tosh, was pretty convincing. Trust, yeah, brother, just trust, trust. Here, let me, uh, do, do I have one expanded? I do not. Damn, I keep closing these, sorry. Let me just make another one. So again, you know, guys, with, with lines, with, with a process, you gotta have a process. And then it just comes to trust after that. It's like, does it fit your criteria? VXRT fit my criteria this morning and I was shorting about right here. So, um, and then I scaled it, which I showed the chart earlier. I can you know, find it one more time if you guys really want to see it. But it's just, it's simple trust, man. That's it. It's just when you do this long enough, you go, okay, what's the only thing holding me back? Trust. I just waited until I, I hit that, like these levels of consolidation that is serious overhead. And then I was going to scale upwards of the open of yesterday, which would be a total point of resistance in top. Um, so I would have scaled that whole thing. Um, I only got up to 740, which is about half. So, um, which sucks because I was actually going to like double down right here at like freaking 770. Um, but it is what it is, man. And you catch a nice little scalp out of it. Um, I only, yeah, covered in halves. That's actually two triangles if you can see correctly, but yeah. Just I see like 40. <laughs> Yeah, seriously. Um, I, I used to, man. I used to, but um, there's so many charts and my process is so simplistic. I don't anymore, but I, I, I'll try to start posting more. I, um, I think that people get a little too wrapped up in charts, to be honest, um, P&Ls, charts. And I, I, it's, again, man, at the end of the day, it's so much of your own mind. Guys, when you understand my process, Joe's process, Faye's process, Alex Bow's, it's now about getting out of your own way. So sometimes I actually don't even want to post charts every day because I feel like it's, it's going to take you out of your own trading. I swear to God. And it's I don't want, like a lot of the times people are like, well, if I can see your chart, I can reverse and engineer your trade. No, if you fucking watch the videos, you could reverse engineer my fucking trade. Like you could take the same trade. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> well, like, <laughs> that's Again, all you gotta do is watch the video <laughs> <laughs> like, guys there's a there's a very thin line trust me there's a very very thin line of um what i feel is helping you guys in and showing uh joe sounds like damn sorry and showing i'm gonna take that as a compliment like a chart a totally compliment take it as a as a you know show a chart every single day and then you relying too much on it so i also like to kind of be like okay guys like now it's time to focus on your own out. Like I'm saying outer lines and I'm saying the levels, but I don't, you know, sometimes people compare themselves a little too much. So trading is just about getting out of your own way, man. Yep. Usually, usually nowadays what I do, if ever, if people want to see my charts, just DM me and just be like, Hey Tosh, how did you trade it? I'll probably send it to you. We can, after I critique yours and we can go through yours. Cause then it just becomes a like, yep. Oh man, I didn't get as good a fill as Tosh. I must suck. No dude, of course not. It's, it's just, you see what I'm saying? Then you get out of your own process. You get out of your own trading. Question. At times I short a stock and I try to cover for a profit and the price jumps when I hit the offer. Is that how manipulated a stock can be? So aware of it trying to exit. At times I short a stock and I try to cover for a profit and the price jumps when I hit the offer. Uh, well, how big a size are you using? <laughs> Is that often how manipulated is that? Um, Gil, either you are trading massive size to create a squeeze on your cover or um, you're trading very a liquid shit that almost even small size will jump it in some way. Is yep. that what you're saying? Because here's the thing, man, on something like Kodak today, um, if you cover even 5,000 shares, it's not going to register huge, you know, like it, it, this is a lot of volume, right? <laughs> Toby. <laughs> so where is the, the follow me? <laughs> I need to blindly <laughs> click buttons and make money. <laughs> don't we all bro? Like, don't we all? Text me at 1-800-FOMO. <laughs> FOMO, FOMO. Uh, VXRT, could you talk about the psychology of where the shorts were trapped and vice versa today? VXRT. Yeah, so, uh, so here's what I pay attention to every single day, and it's already highlighted, but remember what I said, guys, in the beginning, uh, especially H. Lee, um, if you didn't hear before, 
with something that is a massive squeezer on day one, all you got to do is see the potential. See this? You see that when a stock can do this on day one, guys, and it has that kind of range, here's a treat for you. Here's, a, here's, a, here's like a secret sauce kind of thing, even though there is no secret sauce. If a stock has this kind of range and this squeeze potential on day one, it can have it on day two. I knew looking just at day one that the only safe bet was to start, especially with SSR, especially being easy to borrow, is the most outer line levels. So I pay huge attention to where it kept bouncing off in pre, see this? This, this is not exactly a top, but it's a major consolidation point where it bounced off and will be a resistance point on the way up. So I started around there and then I was going to go, I, I don't think I would have gone up to eight because I didn't set a hard stop exactly. I don't think I would have gone up to eight, but I would have gone to the open line because you got to give enough range on a stock that when it has the range, it'll use that freaking range. So I was giving to this line right here, which was the open um, sorry, I think I drew it a little high, but as you can see, I wanted to go to the top. So around that exact area, this is a top, that's a top, that's a top. I wanted to go where the previous tops were in the consolidation point of coming out. And if you notice, this is where a lot of the volume was stuck. Like here, let me just even simplify it more. Like, damn it, why can't that, I'm trying to, damn, what the, oh, there we go. Fuck. Um, this. This is where a lot, God dang, man, what the hell is wrong with TD? Keeps messing up on me. Okay, this is where a lot of the people are stuck from day one. And if it has that kind of range that, I'm, that I was talking about to make it to there, it would probably, this would be the point of where it would absolutely start, you know, topping if it didn't, you know, right here and kept going to like 770. You know, you see what I'm saying? Like, again, where are people stuck? Does it have the range? Is it easy to borrow? Is it, there were so many factors that I just said, dude, this has got to do a really, really elevated move. Then trust your lines. Simple, simple. Trading isn't easy, but it is simple. I knew I'd get chopped up if I shorted right here. I knew I would. Would you scale that all the way to seven? Six? Yeah, so I would have, this line to this line is what I would have given. Yep, about where I shorted. Should one, Joe, you still here? Yep. Oh, <laughs> I was like, he died. Uh, trigger order, no emotion on the extra, yeah. Should one cover into resistance, let's say into a death line, or should one expect the death line to break? Joe, you're the death line master, man. I am not, what do you think? Um, hang on. Can we read that again? Yeah, right here. You mentioned one cover. Oh. Into, yeah. Uh, you should never expect a death line to break. No. And I, huh? Cover into resistance. Okay, so if you're covering into resistance, then the death line is already broken. Uh, yeah, I'm lost on the explanation of that. I am kind of too. Um, well, basically, I mean, we'll just take the second part of it, right? Like, so let's say a death line play. Should you expect the death line to break? Um, like if would, it's on the, if it's above it, no. If it's below it, yes. Yeah, I mean, literally, just wait for the confirm. You know, you don't need to anticipate anything. Seriously. Yeah, if it's below the death line. Like it's uh, the death line is not your stop ever in a death line play. Like we've talked about that probably a hundred times in the video library. Um, yeah, don't stop out at the death line when you're shorting a death line. That's like the worst stop loss. Right. That's where everybody wants to stop out. Would you scale all the way to 760 in what, VXRT? Um, yeah, yeah, I said that one. So just a line and a line, yeah. Uh, Joe, you mentioned about avoiding trade trades uh, today because the Fed conference during November elections, are, the enter are there any other days you look out for of to avoid? No, just FOMC meetings. I hate trading FOMC meetings. Like, if you go back in history and there's actually in trade station, 
there is a way to, and I think it could be manipulated into Thinkorswim as well, but there is a way that you can highlight on the chart every day that the FOMC meets and every time it's just chaos. It's up, it's down. It's like longs are winning, like everybody's thrilled and then all of a sudden shorts are winning. Like it just, it's, it's wild, man. It's longs are, you know, they're like, hell yeah, let's go. And then shorts are like, ah, fuck. Yeah. And then all of a sudden it turns around and longs are like, ah, fuck. And then shorts are like, woo. <laughs> you know, it, like it's, <laughs> it's dude, it, 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 there's, there's very little edge in FOMC days unless you're scalping. Like that's the only way to trade an FOMC day to me is if you scalp, if you scalp the ranges, all right, it's fine. But don't try to trend trade on an FOMC day, like, cause it will just, it'll either go drastically in your favor or terribly wrong. Agree. And I don't really like those odds. Uh, agree. Like, it's just volatile. How do you know it wouldn't break out? Break out? You don't know it wouldn't break out from there. Nobody fucking knows. Dude. You don't know. You don't know VXRT wouldn't have broken out from seven sixty. Like no one knows that. For real. You just know that the chances of it happening are low. For nothing real. is ever a hundred percent, man. Nothing is ever guaranteed or a hundred percent, guys. Plan for the loss. Take it if it comes. What's up with Docu? Uh, I think people are just bagged really hard on Docu. Let's take a look. It's just nasty. Look at the uh, weekly chart. Docu taking a little bit of a beating, huh? Let's take. You want to see the yearly, Joe? No, the weekly. Do a weekly know. bar. I have up to like. 15 days or I'd have to change it. How far back you want to go? No, 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 no. Like a, like a five-year weekly. Five-year weekly? All right, let me just create one. Uh, da, da, da. How do you – new time frame? Yep. Daily. I guess I would just go intraday. Daily and then and – nope, then, nope, daily. No, daily? go to daily. One year and then change that to like five years. Oh, got it. And then on aggregation, put week. There you go. All right. I've never done a chart and like this. And add. Okay. Uh, and now look at that. Weekly. Gotcha. Look at that candle, bro. Yowza. Yo, talk about People this. in docu are just bagged, bro. They're just bagged. Talk about the stuff. They're bagged of hard. Hell. Yeah. Tech crashed right when docu was, you know, reporting earnings. It was just, it was the perfect storm. For, for longs to get bagged in docu. Like, longs that were chasing it higher and higher, it, it was just an op, it was just a time that it just, the time aligned with the market pullback and, and docu felt it. So, I... <laughs> Dude, I'm gonna tell you right now, the guy at 290.23 ooh. felt it. <laughs> he felt it. <laughs> he felt it real good. <laughs> And how do I know it's a man? Because a woman won't make that mistake. A man will. <laughs> so for all the females watching this, I know it was a man up there at that 1, price. Thousand percent. Yeah, that was a man. This is like yeah. this is like the man that goes to the strip club every Friday night. Yep. And expects women like don't do run. that dumb shit. Women don't do dumb shit like that. That's women a man. Don't do shit like that. I'm yeah. just going to venture to say that anybody 260 and above are men. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Girls that are underwater are 220 and below. <laughs> I'm telling you. Yeah, women are like, no, nah, I was holding this from way lower. I was selling up there. I'm just telling you, that that's that's a man thing. Like women that, are way better right traders, there, bro. That's a bunch of men. Right here at 290, 21 to 23 was Toby. <laughs> <laughs> I just said it. It it's was me. Yeah. Money. I mean, I'm still bullish on Docu, 
I'm no, totally like, that dude. Company uh, Joe is never gonna go away. Joe, let me tell you something. Yeah. The three things yeah. I'm bullish on, man. The three things I'm bullish right now. An alternative for meats. I'm bullish on anything electric and environmental because I think it's the next wave. And anything that is work from home, docu, yep. um, um, you know, things like Asana that's you know doing their IPO soon. Any like CRM things that help companies and or something that is. Um, you know, Salesforce or working from home, even dude, even fucking Slack. I think that this will probably have a serious rally. This is literally Slack guys. This is our chat room. This is the ticker symbol. They IPO would recently at 42. I guess the high was CEI. Never. I will never buy CEI. CVI. No CEI. CEI. What's that Joe? Oh, that. Oh, you God. remember yeah, CEI. No, you remember no, no. I'm not talking about shit like this. Jesus. No I mean, way. I will never buy here. that stock. Guys, will if you never buy that stock. Guys, you never buy a stock like this in general if it has a daily chart like this. You have a daily chart like this, I don't give a fuck if they cure cancer, dude. You Their don't fundamentals are horrible. That is they that dump is. shares into shareholders constantly. That's all they do. They're the modern day dries. I totally forgot about CEI. Wow, we haven't traded this. Dude, whole yeah. Time. They are the modern day tries. Oh my God. Yeah, I'm not buying CEI. No, you don't buy, <laughs> stuff, you don't buy stuff like this. What, um, yeah. Um, yeah, when you have, when you have chart, charts like this, guys, this is not a buy. This, this will not come back. Like, because look at what they're saying. You know, 800, what is that? 85 million? My eyes are so bad. Is that 8,500,000? That's what they're saying. That's because of reverse splits. It wasn't actually up there. You see what I'm saying? It almost was the price of Berkshire Hathaway. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? BRK.A? <laughs> yeah. Well, that's the class A shares. Yeah, Wait, look at what's, that, the, man. what's the one that's like super traded? B? Uh, it's no. either B or A. I can't remember. Uh, it's not B. Just do BRK. No? No, I guess not. Oh, then it's that, class A. Yeah. Is it, is it, oh, it's yeah, Dash? It's is this it? 330,000 to get one share of Berkshire Hathaway. <laughs> Bruh. Am I wrong? This is it, right? Um, that's it, I think, yeah. <laughs> so if you want, for the Robin Hood guys, they're like, I get in one share. One share of Berkshire Hathaway is a freaking four-bedroom house in Texas. Bro, for real. Like, I need, I need fractional shares if I'm going to trade, trade that. <laughs> Still a cheaper option in the toilet. Still cheaper. <laughs> Still cheaper than LA real estate, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Oh god. Look at that fucking thing, bro. Nasty. Joe, do you watch the queue just as much as the spy? Yeah. Yeah, right now you have to. You have to. Right every now. everything is everything is tech driven. Because so, look at I mean, look at the queue right now, dude. Crazy. Yep. We selling. We sell in today, see what happens tomorrow and the next day after that. But today we sell it. Yep. Guys, any closing questions for Joe and I? How do you know how far you set your stop loss? Is there a rule that Joe knows about? Like a stop loss for what? I mean, there's all kinds of different situations. After shorting, um, well, it just depends on the price. It depends on the price range of that. I mean, there's no hard, fast rule. So, yeah, I. Yeah, guys. I mean, don't stop out with the herd. Back test yep. the range that you're comfortable with. You know, some give ten cents, some give sixty cents. Size down, use a ton of range, or if you're sized up, you got to use outer lines and tight range. So again, you know, back test what you're comfortable with, but it's different for trader to trader, but just don't stop out with the herd. Stop out where the chart tells you to, not your PL. My penile? What? What's that, Joe? I thought you said my, don't stop out when my penile says to. Oh, no. <laughs> no, don't stop out where your PNL <laughs> said. Unless you have <laughs> loss, stop out where the chart is telling you. Yeah. Spy hey, Joe, are you going to be putting out any more of the option boot camp videos? Probably not because we pretty much, we pretty much, I mean, we covered the entire thing in that. Um, I am going to be putting out like live trading videos of 
options trading. Um, but that is still being done. I'm recording those trades as they come along. So Joe has there will be more there will be more content backwards to give you guys everything that you need. What what do you need now? A sex tape? <laughs> <laughs> That can be filmed tonight. I mean, like maybe right now. <laughs> that can be filmed within the hour. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> within three minutes. Done. Day, day, day. <laughs> Sorry, See, no, 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 no. <laughs> Tay's like definitely. What, what is that with the? Definitely. Oh man. Not. <laughs> oh my god. S Q Q and minus Q Q Q. Just <laughs> <laughs> set your stop. Just below the cost of your mortgage. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> when Joe laughs, I feel like I'm in a car with Seth Rogen. Oh, right. I know. Whoa. A four-seater freaking, what are those little three-wheel cars, you know what I'm talking about, that are like open? Yeah, here's the, here's the have. table for them solo. Oh, God. No, that's not what I'm talking about. Uh <laughs> It's the, is it a trike? No, the slinger. That's it. They're slingers. Slinger, that's right. Dude, I just saw a lime green one. That is a four-seater. That Get was out. sexy. Yeah, slingshot. Oh, yeah, that was it. it. Oh. It was a four-seater, man. That was pretty cool. That's apparently, pretty cool. that's a, like, apparently that's, like, that's like the fourth one i've seen in my neighborhood i don't know why people buy those around here but they well dude it's it's not that people are buying them from texas bro you know all the californians are moving to texas they Fuck it, no. they don't get me going on that it. man dude I'm i telling thought you. i wanted to i thought i wanted to move to montana and then i saw it was a swing state i was like nope <laughs> one year one year we're Republican, the next year we're Democrat. I can't have that kind of emotional stress. No, nah, like, dude, I'm have that. state hopping forever for whoever stays red. I'm going to go to Alaska. Oh, yeah. For they, they'll, shit, I'm going to go to Iceland or something. They pay you to live yeah. there. There's nothing more Republican than Alaska. Is it, is it Iceland or Greenland? I think it's Iceland. They'll literally give you like $2,000 a year to live there and also provide like a woman. They're just like happy to have you there. <laughs> They're like, yo, here's free rent, here's some money. And here's a wife. <laughs> here's, a wife. here's a geisha. Oh, oh my oh, god, slime. you're terrible. <laughs> Shit, I'm going. <laughs> six six two. Oh man. Dude, yeah, that when Californians moved to Texas, that was a funny video. That was a funny video. Yeah. Mask over your nose. Mask over your nose. If somebody ever comes up to me and tells me mask over my nose, I'm going to slap the piss out of them. <laughs> Joe is very passive. Mask over your nose. My hand on your face. <laughs> oh, God. Your mask won't save me from bitch slapping you. <laughs> You're crazy, bro. That's the text. God, dude. Place. Keep Austin weird and red. Austin is not red. Austin is no. not red. No, Austin is the bluest city in Texas. He he is, yeah, dude. Yeah, I I will never live in Austin. I will not move to Austin. Well, it's, it's, I don't even like be, it's visiting be the next Austin. California. Dude, it's like it went. Anytime I've ever went, I'm not going to deny that there's good food. There's good food in Austin. And so, you know, if I go there and I get food, I'm like, shut your mouth. Don't talk thought, to me. Dude, Nobody I, talk I, to I, me here. I legit thought you were talking about Austin or a moderator. I was like. Oh, no. <laughs> I was like, he ain't red, I don't think. Uh, I don't know. I think he is. Oh, I'm I thought sure Austin, Austin was like is. baby blue, sky blue. Because he's like, <laughs> Austin's the hippie side of politics, I think. I, yeah. not, I don't know. I, I I'd think like to he's, talk uh, to Austin and find out. I don't know. I, I'm going to, I'm going to go and now I'm going to go out on a limb and say he's Republican. Bro, Am I crazy to say, am I crazy to say the only thing I care about, man, is like at the end of the day, I said this the other day and a lot of people agreed with me and I'm paraphrasing what I said earlier, but I was like, bro, just give me clear skies. Give me a president. I don't care who you are. Just give me a president that cuts down on taxes, makes it fair, cuts down pollution, saves the environment, you know, provides food. You know, it's like, it's like, dude, it's so simple. It's like, 
all this greed and corruption and shit. Or no, no, what did I say? I said it was a state. I didn't say president. I said a state. I said no homeless. I said give me clear skies. I said make sure the environmental factors are in place. Um, and, and, you know, everybody's treated, I don't know, whatever, man, I'm paraphrasing, but whatever I said back then was actually pretty smart. Uh, <laughs> I'm like, dude, I'm like, I feel stoned right now. I'm like so tired. <laughs> right. Whatever. No homeless and clear skies. That's all I care about. <laughs> yeah. Austin's got a bunch of hippies in his street in sixth street. Yeah. I mean, I, Austin's got good food, but outside of that, that city can burn. <laughs> so nice of you, Joe. So so compassionate. <laughs> Dude, LA. So the reason why we're up north right now is, bro. I was staying in. I, I'm in LA right now, right? Technically, is home base, and it's a shit show, man. It's it's on fire, bro. I mean, if it isn't on fire, this the the skies make it look like hell on earth, like a seventh layer of hell. And it's so nice. Wow. Dude, the fires in Cali are just so bad, man. It's like, it's like. If you love Cali, that's fine. Like, I'm not going to hate on you. I don't love Cali and I don't love LA. I hate LA. But what I will say is if you do have a love for it, it's almost just, dude, getting on a fundamental basis with the dangers, almost just too dangerous, no matter what your love is for the place or not. It's so insane, man. These fires are becoming so normal. Like, yeah, for real. Part, man. It's like, it's like the East Coast has hurricanes and storms. LA has fires. It's like, man, where do you go? Where do you go? What's, pick your yeah. poison, bro. Do you notice Amex and NYSE trade different than NASDAQ? Yeah, I have. I've I haven't paid that. attention that closely, honestly. But I would assume they do. Yeah. There's, I mean, they're, they're, the market makers are different on all three of those exchanges. And so, yeah, I would agree that they trade slightly different. For real. For real. Oh, Rizzle. Guys, closing questions? I need to bring logging back <laughs> Man, I, feel, I feel brain dead right now dude my i'm so freaking tired i'm gonna go nap after this <sighs> I'm gonna more go. minutes, guys. you guys have any questions before we out see um just to kind of recap guys um you know if you have any questions i promise you we're here for you we've got every resource in the world you need whether it's from brokers accelerator course guys we do one-on-one -on -one calls literally our pms are open all day um into the night we'll get back to you as soon as we can and remember we also have lives but we go we'll get back to you as soon as we can uh we've got a full team to help you man if you guys can't find what you're looking for as a trader at mic it's just not out there anywhere then we've tailored everything we've ever done to traders of any skill level, any experience level, any screen time you've had, whether it's one day, seven years, we have a way to help you and, or just make you better, man. We, we take traders all the time that are totally profitable and we just want to make you better, man. So again, guys, it's all humility. It's all, there's no hierarchy at MIC. I'm no better than Bao. Bao's no better than Joe. Joe's no better than Jay 1972. We are all a family and we're here to help each other. And that's why we do these Wednesday webinars is it's a way for us to not only, um, you know, help teach you guys as much as we can. And fuck, I learned something new from Joe today. You know, I learned how to do an inverse chart. I love that. That's going to help me now. So anything that can help each other, we're, we're collective. And that's what I want to make clear at MIC, man, it is truly all for one and one for all kind of, kind of scenario. It's really, it's, it's a camaraderie. Just trade that inverse chart long, Tosh. Like if you're like, fuck, <laughs> I would short this. I would short the bejesus out of this and just long that. Oh, I can't get over this, bro. I can't get long over it. this, man. <laughs> Look at that. Look at that. That is the death candle, bro. That is the death candle. Yep. Oh, my God. The funny thing, though. Remember, guys. Remember what I said the disclaimer was. This is inverse. So don't think it's a short. So you're going to see this. You forget that this is the inverse. Then you're going to short and then it rips to the moon. <laughs> <laughs> just look at the scale on the right side they're minus signs yeah just look at <laughs> yeah okay yeah, i'm gonna short i'm gonna more i'm gonna short here at negative 16.5 dude that is so funny so love you guys man thank you so much for coming this week man joe always fun as hell uh, dude i'm gonna go grab a fat nap man i uh i'm there running you go. <laughs> Guys, if you have any questions, on empty. shoot me a text at 213-458-5997 and you will not get, um, uh, you're not going to gain dick pics, but you will get information on how to join the club. Sorry, Mama Tay. Okay, I'm out. Hey. <laughs> See you, Joe. Later, bro.